Mm. And so that leads into some pretty rough situations for the defenders, which is why we see a lot of defense being put on it. Besides that, overall, a lot of emphasis is going to be, especially if it's not that very central uplink point right by the market, if we don't see it positioned there, a lot of focus is going to be on the streets, as oftentimes the attackers will need to get past one of those to get even close to the uplink. We'll see a great example of this here, as we haven't actually seen this uplink point today just yet. It's going to be on the direct west point. So the defenders will start with good control of the entire uh, northwest side of the map, and they'll generally hold th their players here. It looks like you're going to send one player across into the central compound on the west side here. And actually, it's looking like they're going to send a second one over here, too, to posture up a little bit more aggressively. So we could see some early fights happening as a result of that. Yeah, it looks like we're going to see contact and f a gun battle a lot earlier than what we're used to seeing here. Three, four players are all close together against the enemy towards that West Market street here. Got Pwn Cake specifically trying to see if anyone on Mob Squad wants to actually take a pretty big risk and push themselves into the open. Blue GA in the meanwhile does toss a flashbang out into the open and is going to be able to find a nice headshot onto that. He also manages to down Pwn Cake, but at the same time Pwn Cake finds a response to that. So regardless, finds his mark, knocks two players out entirely, and certainly going to be a valid trade at one for two. That was really important for Pwn Trade to get that trade, though, for the Mob Squad side to give themselves a chance, at least within this round. Actually, they are up three versus four as well, so they're looking like they're in a decent position here, specifically because they're defending. Well, we've got Captain Soda. He's going to be working with one of his other teammates, who unfortunately has just gone down. Mr. Beefy trying to push in from the south side, a little bit too in the open there on the side street. Ends up getting cut out by the defensive setup here from Mob Squad, leaving only two alive for SMC Tactical now. Both of them are pretty split up, too. You've got one to the north here in the market trying to push his way through this west compound. And Captain Soda, it's looking like he's just going to move in after checking his tower to confirm that Land Jordan is still up here. It looks like he's going to move to regroup with him, and they'll try to push together. Looks like Land and Jordan trying to find an angle into that northwest courtyard to see if he can get any trades and make it happen for his team. Oh, he's going to spot out a player oh, he's looking coming the out way. of the building. Oh. He doesn't see it. He was looking to the left on that balcony he was checking before. I think he missed the cross. Great opportunity to find a free trade and bring it into a 3v2 at minimum, but missed opportunity, unfortunately. That was his chance, but they still have almost three minutes left within this round, and so let's see if their patience pays off and they get another opening here, but... Those chances, they don't come very often, do they, Blue? No, they don't, especially not a player crossing so much into the open like that. Yeah. And it was very lucky that he had the position to line it up, so it's very unfortunate they didn't manage to catch that in that scenario there. So the problem now for SMC Tactical, I'm actually a little bit surprised we're not seeing more communication between the two of them, um, because they're kind of stuck right now. Uh, they can't really go for a direct push onto the street. There's too many players alive on Mob Squad. They would, they would get melted the second they went into the open. So they're trying, I think, right now to either wait for someone on Mob Squad to make a mistake and peek again, like we saw before when they missed that opportunity. Uh, that or, again, just kind of just wasting time to try and come up with a better strategy here. But at the moment, it doesn't seem like they have a whole lot of ideas. They're just posturing up onto the outside, slowly moving towards the street. But like I said, if they push the street, they're, they're already pinched. They won't realize it yet, but yeah, there we go. One player's already been found. Captain Soda getting knocked out. There's no way any communication actually came out there, so Landon George is going to try to throw a nade into the open, basing it off the sound cue. He'll attempt to spot this player across the street now. Because the smoke is a bit of red herring. He does have a player that's likely going to peek into his crosser in a second. He should have been able to see him, actually. But again, he's not able to capitalize on it, so he's going to be forced back again. Yeah, Landon Jordan throwing out that smoke after his teammate goes down. I would have loved to see them throwing the nades together. Uh, you know, there wasn't a lot of nades in the beginning of this round, and I know these teams aren't communicating because of the proximity chat. However, maybe they can have a protocol. If I throw a nade, you throw a nade yeah. <laughs> in the same area, and we can utilize the, the utility together. It was, it was unfortunate. Uh, those last two players on SMC Tactical were put into very much kind of an unwinnable situation uh, where they're already close to the enemy. So like you were saying, they can't really talk uh, because they're just going to give themselves away. They don't know the positions of those four players, and that's the reason why they can't talk, because someone could just be on the other side of the wall for them. And if they did come up with a plan on open comms, then, well, that would pretty much immediately be given away, and he could just yell, like, they're right here! <laughs> like, and, and then, yeah, that would be the end of that, essentially. Um, so they're not really able to do anything there. They just have to work off of anything that might have been pre-established in the 45, in, in the you know time that they had going into this map, since it's still obviously just the first round here. They would have had, well, more than 45 seconds to come up with a plan for this one. But 
obviously not accounting it for it to go down to such a, a, a low situation for them. They just couldn't come up with a counter to it. They definitely couldn't. It would seem like a pretty one-sided affair in yeah. that round as well. So unfortunately, that was uh, mainly coming down to Mob Squad's really aggressive posturing as well. I forget the exact player that pulled it off with the double kill they got right at the start of the round. Uh, that gave them a pretty massive advantage right from the start. Gave them a lot of intel, I would imagine, too, because that player was not only able to get this first kill, but then he peeked back, probably had a moment to throw out comms and then go out again before he ended up going down. So. Bet. These guys are going back over their strategies. You can hear them discussing mm -hmm. exactly how they want to approach this round. We've got five minutes within the round, just starting off, and SMC Tactical is on the defense here. There's nothing damning coming out of uh, what we saw from the opening comms there. It's a little bit of a call out to move Soda to a position, so we'll see where he's going to end up placing himself. Besides that, didn't really manage to catch anything significant from these teams. Overall, very similar strategies coming in from both sides of this. Mob Squad with a little bit more of his emphasis on the north push. I think this is just an early round play. They're trying to catch someone who might be transitioning into the alleyway because of their spawn position. Besides that, it's players moving on the main central street to try and uh, take a position just around the corner from the uplink. And the rest of the team is going to move in from the south compound here and attempt to cross the street from the south behind that little yellow car that you can see there on the left side. Looks like Blue GA is trying to find an opening towards the middle of the map here. Plots taking down Pwncake and finishing him. It is now four versus five in the favor of Mob Squad. This is great for the attacking side. They uh attacking is generally much much more difficult. It opens up the entire south push now too. So someone who previously was gonna be able to look east to west and cover a push from the market now has to, this is gonna be the sickness more than likely that'll adjust, uh, now has to completely either change his position or constantly be aware of a southern push as they have no one to watch that from the street now. The entire central street is just open for the taking basically. Looks like Blue GA is right next to an enemy on the SMC tactical side, Captain Soda. Let's see if he heard the shots coming from Blue. Let's see if he's aware. It looks like he has an idea that Blue GA is in his general area. Both teams are probably going to posture up passively, though. Both players, that is. Let's see Blue's teammate shooting out some shots to the left side. And Blue did just do a click on his radio, so signaling something to a teammate. Again, every team has kind of different rules for what those clicks mean, though, so it's, it's a little bit difficult to tell what he's signaling. More than likely, he was saying, someone's near me, but because that's what most teams use a one-click for, as far as I've been told. Uh, it's just to kind of signal that someone's close to me, so I can't talk right now. But yeah. Ooh, oh, no. no, that was what that click was supposed to possibly prevent. Instead, it leads to his death, it seems. Nolamite sneaking up onto the balcony, accidentally knocks out Blue GA. Probably won't even realize it for a moment here as well, so he's going to sit on negative one kills after that pickup. That is so unfortunate. Mob Squad was one man up, and Blue was in such an optimal position right up there against Captain Soda. Oh, that was their opening. That was their opportunity to really secure the round. At least they have two minutes left within this round. Let's see if Mob Squad can bring it back from this 4v4. Oh, Landon Jordan. He's in a perfect position right now. He's got to be ready for the push from the alleyway, though. If Nolamite rushes out, he could still surprise him and catch him unawares. That might be what we see happening here. The question, Olamite? oh, he's going to check it. Oh, oh, and runs wow. right into his face. He'll definitely take some heat from that one as far as we can hear and is not going to be able to escape. You can see him. He was going for the syringe, so we know he took damage from that. Just wasn't able to escape quickly. Plots, though, finds the trade afterwards and does manage to take down Captain Soda, leaving it into a 2v2 still. One player from the mob squad is revival, so they could bring this back to a 3v2. He's down on the street as well, but he's, oh, no, the smoke just went away, so... Our Semper is going to take a little bit of a risk here if he wants to go for the res. Meanwhile, STB is going to move in. Our Semper accidentally, or excuse me, he gets to revive on plots. That'll be another team kill. That means SMC Tactical are down to only one player. They might actually go for the uplink here and just try to end it out right. No, the Sickness moves in, takes out one of them. He's going to try to move on the other two. Plots in the meanwhile, he's got the uplink. He's got his tablet out. He's going to try to end the game right here. Sickness rounds around the corner. He finds plots, interrupts the uplink, stops that. And now we're down to a 1v1. This could be a massive clutch from the Sickness. And he only needs one more kill to end it here. It's all on our Semper now. Nade's going to be a little bit off the mark. Thought he was close to his teammate that he just took out. Not the case. So now our Semper will move in. Did he see the Sickness? I don't know if he moved out enough to be able to catch him. Sickness will maintain a safe position for now. Both teams will have to go quiet. As we're out of the last minute here, our Semper unfortunately does not have the luxury of time to try and close this one out. So he does have to clear things quickly. But look, the Sickness, he's, got, he's read him like a book right now. 
He's got the flank on watch. Our Semper, he's got to be perfect on this lean. Sickness looking the wrong way, but he will adjust. They take each other out, but it's SMC Tactical that get the kill first, so they win the round. Wow, it looked like he had him dead to rights. He had him in his crosshair, but that was a that was a trade. Yep. I can't even tell who won the round, actually. It's SMC that gets it, SMC? basically. Yeah, first connection wins in that situation, so whoever registers the kill to the server first will get the credit, and in that instance, SMC get it. Okay, so it was Landon Jordan that had the the better positioning there. So unfortunate for Mob Squad. They should have definitely had that round in the bag. Mm -hmm. It seemed like it as well, but the team kill obviously to stabilize things, yeah. they would have had a great chance to actually knock out uh, the last player from uh, from SMC that was sitting on the inside of that street and basically would have been able to swarm as they had those players pushing in from the south too. Really good setup, just again, fell apart in the execution. That often has been the way we've seen attacking teams lose rounds here on Bazaar, even going back to our last match. So the teams will trade. We'll see the defensive side win both of the opening rounds. And now we're going to see the uplink move. It's going to head over to the central east compound. And we'll head in game as it looks like the next round is starting right about now. You know, I, I really like Mob Squad's uh, approach there towards the end, though. We saw them uh, trying to get to that uplink and putting in that code. It's unfortunate. I wonder if at that moment they can just communicate to each other loudly and just say, cover me, because they have such an advantage in numbers. Well, the thing is, you don't want to make it so obvious what you're doing. So it was Plots attempting to do the actual uplink there, and he had to have been very close. He was on that for a good five to ten seconds. So yeah. had to have been within just one or two digits of doing it. It's very likely he might have actually messed it up or had gotten slowed down by something else there. So he was on it for a while, but fell very short of the uplink. And mind you, that would have ended the game for Mob Squad right there on round number two. So very close, but ultimately SMC were able to hold things together. And if he had called things out, we more than likely would have seen a push from uh, from SMC a little bit quicker there to try and actually take him out. He wouldn't have gotten as close. You want to try to obscure what you're doing as much as possible. And that's why teams just, for the most part, don't even talk Definitely. during the rounds if they know there's an enemy even close by to them. Which, speaking of which, we have a good example of that right now. Obviously, we've already seen a one-for-one -one exchange in this round. Uh, Blue GA holding against this wall. I don't know if Pwncake has realized it, but yeah, he's directly on the other side of this wall. He looks like he knows. A well-lobbed nade would end his life right now. <laughs> Pwncake has called in some backup here, but oh. BGA takes him down. Let's, let's see if he gets traded out here. Mr. Beefy. He's got two more players he could impact on as well. He's got to watch that first floor window. No, doesn't catch it. Mr. Beefy gets the peek on the window, takes him out, finds the one-for-one one trade. We're still even into a 3v3. That was a good trade for Mr. Beefy, yeah. forcing that engagement. Right, Bot's recently finding another one, but no, Landon! After Mr. Beefy had called it to be safe, they didn't realize they had a player sitting in this window right there. So Mr. Beefy's going to lose yeah. a teammate. And very quickly, this devolves for the guys on SMC Tactical. Had it even into a 3v3. In a matter of 10 to 15 seconds, it's brought to a 1v3. And it's Mr. Beefy looking for the outright clutch. I'll throw a fake smoke here. Uh, let's just try and make it look like he's going to push out this angle, when in reality, he's going way to the north. Try and sneak in, probably from that little alleyway. I don't know if he can actually walk into it or not, but there's an alleyway you can see in between the two buildings on the north side. And he might be trying to cut through that. As you mentioned, it is a one versus three. At least he has three minutes left on the clock, but yeah, this is going to be a very tough situation for Mr. Beefy to come out on top of. However, we have seen some heroic, heroic plays from individuals today. We've seen several multi kills, so let's see if Mr. Beefy is able to show us anything special here. A lot of clutches oh. for sure. Oh, he knows. He knows STB House is here in the corner. Let's see what he does. <laughs> <laughs> Was that yes. a player? Yes, that's, that's what you thought it was. Okay. So that was Mr. Beefy making a fake death sound. We saw a player do that last week too. <gasps> <laughs> and so it's, uh, it's, it's varying degrees of realisticness, I guess you could say. That one was pretty all right, actually. I'd give that one an eight out of 10, but it doesn't seem to have tricked him. However, Mr. Oh. Beefy's gonna run around the corner. It's a nice banger of a shot there against Plots, takes him out, brings us into a 1v2, and he can now round back to try and push the uplink. That was a really good kill as well. As you see, he, no one was able to even shoot back at Mr. Beefy, so really optimal positioning from him to try to make this round go into his favor. It's still a one versus two scenario, so it's still very challenging. The time is running down. A minute and 50 seconds left to go here. And Mr. Beefy, he's moving along the east wall and trying to sneak up on his enemy, but STB House 
is sticking really close to his teammate. He wants to make sure that if he goes down, his teammate is going to be able to revenge him. Now he's going to move incredibly slowly so as not to give away any any footstep cues here as he uh, walks up to the fence. It's a good thing that he went over to the far east and cleared out the player that was positioned there for Mob Squad is now he knows he can move this slowly. He knows he can take this slower approach without risk of just being picked off from the east. But ultimately, it's going to be when he peeks around the corner here that'll run into real issues. Besides STB, uh, he doesn't really uh, have a good idea as to where the final player is, so he's going to have to spend some time trying to isolate where our Semper is positioned. It looks like, oh, STB House, this timing is going to be so crucial for Mr. Beefy. If he keeps I, I on this position... I think they know this is happening, too, because yeah? you can see STB House went onto the inside of the alleyway. Okay. So he's waiting right around the corner there, and more more importantly, he's, he's not watching down that alleyway anymore. He's watching the position where Mr. Beefy's moving in from. Is there peeker's advantage in this game, Blue? Uh, online, I would say somewhat, yeah. Okay. But because of how low the TTK is, it really just comes down to who gets the first shot, which we see Mr. Beefy jumping on, gets the engagement there, but is a little bit too aggressive with his push. Doesn't realize that our Semper was right around the corner, so he finds the trade, and Mob Squad get their second point. Now on map point now at 2-1. to one. one more round, regardless of if it's an uplink or a kill win, they will take the map. Now, would you say there, did Mr. Beefy, is that his game sense coming to make him pre-fire that corner or did was there a tell that we didn't catch? So he knew the, he saw, he probably, he, he knew where the nade was coming from, from previously when he had tried to push in from the other side of that alleyway. Realized, all right, someone's down this alley, I can't push this direction. So that's why he made the move over to the east to take the player up there first, because then he could move in slowly from the street and kind of creep up on STB house. Ultimately though, in that kind of position, you could see it's just a slowly cutaway corner. It's a really like obvious spot for a defender to position just because it gives him so many advantages, but it's so obvious to where he's going to be willing to push out into that just because there's such a high likelihood of someone holding that because it gives him an, somewhat of an angle advantage against two separate pushes. So that's why he's going to hold in that corner there. But like I said, it's too obvious. So STB House saw the native for before, knew he would still be somewhat in the general area and as such just basically rushed out in order to get the kill as quickly as possible. It does go for, like you were talking about before, a little bit of peeker's advantage there. More so than anything, just it becomes a moving target so yeah. that it's a little bit more difficult for his opponent to actually connect shots onto him. Definitely. I mean, you notice he, he let go of his walk button right at that moment and just charged <laughs> his enemy and yeah that's that's really impressive all right well this is the last hope now for smc tactical they need to win every single round from this point forward they can't win it on this round unfortunately since they're on the defending sides they can't steal away the second point but mob squad can go for the overkill win here and pick up a fourth point if they're able to do this but it's not needed they just need to win it on kills and they will take the map and take a win for this round of the swiss Let's see if Mob Squad are able to put a point on the board on this attacking side. We saw last round they got so close when they were on the attacking. They were actually up on man advantage, but ended up TKing to give the advantage right back. And so let's see if this is the round that they're able to close out this match in. All right, so we've got a bit of a slow lead up now for these guys. It's looking like Mob Squad are going to try to Try to move in basically as quietly as possible oh. before they're engaged on. The Sickness does see one of these players further down. What he hasn't probably realized though is that Plots and some of these other players that also take a, weird color thing. a really significant amount of control uh, over here towards kind of the central north part of the market. So he's going to have to be careful because Plots could peek out here. It seems like he's got a pretty decent angle advantage against anyone that would try to peek him from that spot though just due to the way the car is positioned. Mm -hmm. So the sickness shouldn't have to be too worried about this just yet. He can still hold in this position pretty confidently. As it's very hard to cut him off from a flank. I wonder, I'd love to see Plots here moving more towards his, the north and helping his teammate take out that player trade, behind trade. the car. A quick trade, one for one. Oof, Nolo might actually be moving in here. A lot of kills happening all of a sudden here. It's SMC tackle to take the advantage. Pwncake's gonna be able to finish off STB to make sure he doesn't get back up. Not onto a 2v3. Ooh, Plots just missed an opportunity to find one of the members of SMT Tactical 2. He's snuck by. He's going to move to the second floor. This could be bad for one of the last two members on Mob Squad as he's sitting back. But it looks like he's moved into a safe position. STB's not going to be able to catch him. However, check this out. Plots getting very, very close to moving forward here towards oh. the uplink. He's going to throw smokes out. He might just go for it. No, he's going to rush up top. Try to catch STB. Nicely done. Manages to clip him off just as he tries to escape down below. Finishes them off a few seconds later, and now it's even the fight into a 2v2. 
Yeah, SMC Tactical, they moved a little bit away from that uplink, leaving their teammate to dry there. Let's see if that punches them. They're moving back in to try to defend this uplink. Well, it's going to be very close quarters here. We see weapons like the G3 coming into play right here. Pwn Cake trying to clear out the inside of the house. Both of these guys are actually moving around. The plot's making a lot of noise, though. That should give Pwn Cake a good idea as to where Plot's is positioned. But he's got to be careful just in case he's holding the angle. Problem, though, for Plot's, he's stuck in one of those corners where he doesn't truly know where his opponent is coming from. Shots from Pwn Cake, though, have given it away. He's going to be able to work off the sound intel now. But no! Oh, Pwn Cake! No. Walks right into Mr. Beefy. We talked about the confusion and how hard it is to tell players apart, but he redeems himself. Finds another kill on the plots just a second later, and this goes down to a 1v1. It could potentially end the map now. Mob Squad against SMC Tactical. It's one player from each side. R. Semper from the side of Mob Squad and Mr. Beefy from SMC Tactical. Both trying to close out. R. Semper's got a good gap between him and his opponents. And even better, he's got a push coming in from the east. I don't know if intel was ever given to him that they lost to the east side. So this, he could walk right up on him without him even knowing potentially. But we have to hope that Mr. Beefy, his game sense is true here. And he realizes that the east flank is a real possibility. R. Semper's a little bit timid to actually make this push across the street for that very reason. Oh, R. Semper's gonna get a good angle on this. And Mr. Beefy goes down. What a series of events. Things happened so fast there in the middle. Yeah, it's, it's, it's often, like we talked about before, Bizarre really kind of explodes in the middle of these rounds. We see a lot of kills happening very quickly, and then it oftentimes will come down to just a few players at the end of the day.